Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's March 25th, 2020, and uh, today I thought I'd share with you my thoughts on, uh, on growing uh, red raspberries on your property. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is I've just been digging up a whole bunch of the raspberry plants. We've got them listed on our Syracuse uh, Craigslist here, and, and I don't ship the plants and uh, for, for local people to pick up, and we're in Oswego, New York. So, uh, and I realized some of my other videos on raspberry plants were in some of my Ask Me Anything uh, videos. So I thought I'd make a couple of videos on growing the raspberry plants. Uh, the first couple of things I'd say about raspberry plants, there's two ways you can get them. The ones that I'm selling are called bare root. I think they're the most hardy, the ones that need the least amount of attention. And then you can get the potted plants and you may pick them up in the box stores and all that. You'll get bare roots often from the nurseries as well. Uh, the thing I would say about these, uh, the raspberry plants are, the first thing is they really like uh, full sun, if at all possible. So it's really important to look, will, do you have enough yard space where you can put a row or, or, or even a short row of putting some of these red raspberry plants uh, are on your property that are gonna get full sun. They don't like wet feet, so you don't wanna put them in, a, in an area where water pools after a rainfall, unless you're willing to build up a mound and put, build them and, and uh, plant them into the mound so that their, their roots can dry out and not be saturated for days, day after day in, uh, in rainwater that's pooling. Uh, they can tolerate sand, silt, clay, any mixture of them. Uh, often people, when they prep their, their areas, they recommend getting soil tests ahead of time and checking your pH. Raspberry plants like a slightly acidic pH, somewhere between 5.5 and 6.5, somewhere in that range. But they really can tolerate other ranges as well. But for less disease pressure, having them uh, maintaining wa uh, adequate hydration watering and having good organic material uh, uh, resources for them in the soil and uh, or fertilizing them and uh, and having full sun those are all really important and the pH between 5.5 and 6.5 so when we I hope I covered all of those points I wanted to cover when we're uh, looking for the location on our property. Once we know we've got the full sun, we're finding a place that doesn't have standing water. We think we got the right uh, pH. If you're not into permaculture and all the organic things the way that, that we do things, it's certainly okay to go ahead and prep the site that you want to uh, put the plants in ahead of time and fertilize that area. So some people will rototill the area to turn it over. Uh, I think that's fine to do when you're first getting the plant started and all and do them in a single row so later on you can put a trellis in there. We like planting the plants about every two feet on center and have the roots in alignment with the with the row that you're laying down. If you're going to be planting more than one row I think 10 to 12 feet no less than 8 feet apart the rows and the reason is these plants will get uh, 5 to 7 feet tall potentially and, uh, and with the heavy berry burdens, ours get about six and a half feet tall, but with heavy berry burdens, they're, the plants are really gonna, gonna spread out pretty wide. They're, they're gonna lean to the sides and getting down with a mower or trying to navigate through those areas is, is, is pretty important. Maintaining the rows after you've got the raspberry plants in the ground, you, from the center line, you can allow the roots to, to send up new shoots, maybe six to eight inches, no more than one foot from the center line. So at, at maximum, your depth, your, the thickness of your rows should, after they, the berry plants have been there for a couple of years, you don't want it any, any deeper than one and a half to two feet wide. And not just because they tend to spread out, well, they have little thorns on them. These ones have very little thorns. But the main reason is you want really good sun exposure between each row. You want really good airflow. This decreases disease pressure as well. You want to make sure that there aren't other, other berry plants, wild berry plants, uh, wild raspberry plants nearby. You want to make sure the blackberry plants aren't nearby. You don't want to be transmitting diseases from those plants over into your plants here as well. So those are a couple of things. And again, if you've got a low-lying area, you can build up mounds as well. 
uh, when we're planting the plants, like we've had some severe droughts around here uh, over the last couple of years. This last year was really severe. And you can see, instead of them being just, like this part here could get cut right off, and you see these roots coming from this base. Uh, because of the drought, these ones really uh, went down deep and these ended up being really mulched heavily over the last couple of years to help maintain the moisture. Now the berry plants produce tons of berries during those times, but because of the deep mulch, uh, these plants kept shooting up higher and higher. The roots, as the roots make it closer to the surface, some of the ones, and some of the roots will make it, make it deeper in there. And they'll send up their new canes, new shoots that'll come up and there'll be new canes. These two are last season's primocanes. They'll send up uh, uh, a cane each season, and this is called the primocane, primocane when it first comes up. And after winter, it's called the floral cane. There will be some berries being produced on the primocane uh, late in the season. And then uh, the floral cane, which this one is now because this one came up last year, they'll be green when they first come up and they get more maroon as they get older. You cut out the older canes. Each cane can be there when it sprouts up this first season, let it over winter. It'll produce a whole bunch of berries the next season. At the end of the fall, you cut that one off as close to the ground as possible. Uh, most of the raspberry plants that you, you get from a nursery will look a lot like this, where you just see very superficial roots coming out uh, to the sides. Now I cut off other canes coming up over here. But the roots are rather shallow in raspberry plants. We just happen to use a lot of deep mulch here, and as a result, with our very severe droughts, the plants still did well because a lot of them send down deep roots. They all network together. I recommend planting them about two feet apart. And the reason is that, and when I plant them, I recommend having the roots going in, in alignment with the row that you're planting the raspberry plants in. And the reason is those roots will throw up new canes uh, each year. And you want to have the, and so the, all that two foot space is gonna get filled in and you get all these crowns of new canes coming up each year. If you just keep them pruned and maintain them, they'll do very, very well. Uh, we really don't want the plant, the row to get any thicker than probably 18, 24 inches at, at the most because these are really going to send out lots of leaves, lots of little side branches in the second year when these ones get about this tall. They're going to send out lots of little side branches and they aren't very long, but lots of leaves and loaded with berries and they're going to lean way out. And no one wants to dig in to harvest the berries. You want to have the berries easy to, to harvest. So if you can keep the crowns no more than 18 inches wide, 16, 18 inches, no more than two feet wide, uh, then it gets to be more challenging and you aren't going to want to spend a lot of time out there harvesting them. Uh, I think that's about it that I wanted to say about uh, the conditions and all. I'll try and make a video when I actually put a lot of these in the ground. And, uh, and I'll try and make a video when I set up the trellis as well. I'm similar to what I've done with the blackberry plants. And then I'll make a video on pruning them uh, in, the, in the fall months after the floral cane. That's the second season that the cane's been up. That you remove that and remove it from the site as well. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Uh, if you found this video of value, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And by all means, folks, stay safe, take good care of yourselves. Bye-bye now.